Hey everybody, it's Janet. I'm here to show you how to stretch and lace your needlework to finish it off for framing when you're done with it. So these are some of the supplies you're going to need. The first thing is DMC number 8 pearl cotton. Don't get the 12, that's too thin, and number 5 is too thick. Also, I would recommend using a lighter color. I'm just using red here for demonstration purposes so you can see it against the fabric. Uh, obviously, you need scissors. And to pin it, because first you pin your sides and then you lace it when you're done. The pins, kind of pins you're going to need are stainless steel. The reason for that is they don't rust. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to, after you pin it, whether you want to, excuse me, pin and lace it, whether you want to leave the pins in. Some people do, it's personal preference. I take them out myself. But make sure they're stainless steel. Okay, the last thing you're going to need to wrap your piece around is either foam core board, such as this. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. And the foam is where you push your pins into. The other material you can use is, and I buy this in a like four by eight foot piece of mat board. And I prefer getting this mat board, which is white on one side and black on the other. That way it's kind of multi-purpose for whatever, you know, if you're using a darker fabric, you can put it against the black so you don't see white shining up through it. Um, and the same for the white if you have a lighter fabric. Okay, before I show you how to lace your piece, I want to show you what not to do from my uh, mistakes. This is one of my first lace pieces, and although it looks nice in the picture, what I did wrong was I cut the board crooked. And it's hard to tell, but it kind of bows out here. And that makes for uneven tension. And the other thing I really did wrong was I laced it too tight. So I'm going to flip it over here. And I know it'll probably be hard for you to see because this is 30 count fabric and obviously very tiny. But when you lace it too tight, you can see along the edges where your fabric line, the thread of your fabric, instead of going straight up like this, it starts bowing around or curving because the tension is pulling it way too much. So that's just a little tip, learn from my mistake and don't do that. You want even tension on it but not so tight that it's pulling things out of shape. Okay, so the first part to getting your piece laced is after cutting, making sure your board is cut very straight is I take a long ruler here to get my center marked. And I go from corner to corner. And I use a pencil to make an X. I was way off there. have a little X there. In the middle of that obviously is your exact center. And then I use the eraser to get rid of any extra pencil marks that I don't want left on there. I just basically want to be able to see that little center mark. Okay, and then once I had that center mark in my stitched piece I find from the pattern where the exact center is and I put a pin through that. And then I lay my piece over it and I kind of fold it back and I stick it right into that center spot. Now I'm using mat board so it's much stiffer 
than the foam core, so you got to push a little harder. But that's what I use to kind of start where my center is. And then from there, I just start I kind of eyeballing it and using my ruler by taking a pen. Like I said, just sort of put it around your piece. Take your ruler and you figure out, okay, I'm a quarter of an inch down there or however long, however the depth is for you. And a quarter of an inch down here. And then I put a pin in the end through the board to mark it. And like I said, this is, the mat board is much thinner and so I can't put the pin all the way in it. Um, the foam core you can. And again, that's with personal preference if you want to do that to leave the pins in, then you're going to need to use the foam core. Otherwise, if you're just using them as temporary markers, then you can use the mat board. So I'll do that in a couple spots here, and then I'll do the same thing for the bottom, get it adjusted, use my ruler, figure out about the spot it needs to be in, put a couple pins in, kind of where my fingers are, and then the same on the sides. And then after I do that, I'll show you in the next segment how to start putting more pins in to get it centered. Okay, so I've pre-pinned this to show you what it basically looks like once you have all your pins in to set it in place. You see that I still have the middle ones sticking up out of it. And you just kind of go every half inch to an inch all the way around it, pinning into the foam core or the mat board until it's got a fairly even tension. It doesn't have to be exactly on the spot. You do have a little wiggle room once you've done one side of the lacing. But I'll show you that in a little while. But this is what it looks like at first. And now I'm going to take the pin out from the middle and flip it over. And show you how you start the lacing. Okay, so now that the piece is turned around and getting ready to, to thread it, I put four or five pins in straight through. I don't go all the way through the mat board, just kind of halfway, just to keep the fabric down so that it's, you know, about where it's staying where it should be, just kind of as a guide. And you could take them out as you go along. Now I've threaded probably a double arm's length of my DMC Pearl Cotton through a number 22 needle. You want it that big to obviously, this is a thick thread, to be able to thread it through there easily. And then to start off your threading, take the end the other end and I make a slip knot. You just loop up your fabric, your thread, excuse me, and then you push the other thread through that. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So then what I do is at the very bottom where I'm going to start, I start pretty much at the edge of where the board meets the fabric. And I go down probably, I would say that's about a quarter of an inch yeah. or so. And I come up and I pull my thread. Kind of watch your thread as you go. It, it, when you're using with long lengths like this, it's easy to get it and knots obviously. So now there's where my little slip knot is. 
and I bring my needle through it, bring the thread all the way out. And so if you can see how that's looped together. And then I'm going to close this and pull it tight. And you know it's locked in place when you hear a little snap sound in the thread. If you don't hear that snap sound, you need to redo it because it'll slip through. And mine didn't, so I need to redo it. Okay, so I'm going for my second attempt here. Okay, now that I have my beginning knot started, um, I, I went through and did some more just regular knots, just as an extra assurance that it's not going to slip out. Just a little safeguard. Okay, so now I'm going to start lacing. I like to start on the side that is the you have the longest length to work with. But it's up to you. It doesn't, again, personal preference. So I go to the opposite side and I put it in close to where I put the other one. I bring it up through close where I put the other one on the other side. And I pull my string through. You can tug it a little bit, but you're going to have to go back after a little while to start another piece of thread and then kind of tighten your laces again, just like you were lacing a corset. Uh, so you'll be doing that quite a few times. So don't worry that that's going to slip right now. It's not really important at the beginning. And when you go to... Going out there. When you go to then work up your lacing I wouldn't put them any farther than about a half an inch apart. If you do any more than that, it's, it's not going to keep a nice even tension up your piece. And then I go to the other side. And do it again. So you can see it's starting to take shape with the corset or laced shape. See that little knot there, but it came out. So this is what you're going to do all the way up the piece. Okay, when you get to the part or get to a section where you need to add more thread, what you do is again cut off about a double length, arm length's full, make your slip knot, take your needle from the one that's ending, put it through the slip knot, make sure your tail's out of the way, and then again, oops. Grab your slip knot and make sure that it makes that snapping sound. You can hear it and feel it also. You can't, but I can. <laughs> so you can see, and you'll be able to tell if you pull in both directions, it's not going anywhere. It's locked in place. And then if I kind of have a big tail and snip it down a little bit. Okay, now after I've taken my needle off the one end and re-threaded it on the new end, I just keep going. And working my way up. Now you'll see that when you get to that part where you did the slip knot and you joined the two threads, 
it'll just pop through the material there. It's not a big deal. And then I'll stop here and I'll see you again when I get to the end of it. Okay, so now I've gotten all the way to the end and now is the part where I'm going to come back to the beginning and start tightening the laces. So what I do is, this is your first one, and it's by itself, so I take the top thread of the next one that's closest to you, and I pull the tension on that. Now here's where I'm warning again about not making the mistake I made with this piece the first time. Don't pull it too tight, just to where it's just snug, and then hold it with your finger and you can see it's loose. And then grab the top thread of the next one and do the same thing and then hold that. Top thread, snug, top thread, snug and hold. So you can see I'm just systematically working all the way down until I get to the bottom and then I will tie it off. Okay, so now I'm here at the end and I need to tie off. So what I do is kind of hold it down. Usually this is the part where my husband helps me and holds the thread down for me. Thank you. Okay, so for that last tie off section there, let me see that last thread. Okay, just hold that one. What I do is, it's upside down for you, but I'm kind of making a number four shape. If you look at it from my direction, you can see there's the line of the four, right, and then it crosses over. So then what I do is I take that long line and I go underneath it. And I tighten it a little ways. And I do that about probably four times. So it's getting it really secure. And it kind of slips to the end. And it's tight. Now, sometimes when I do this, it ends up with a little loose slack there. So I just go back through. It's already tight, but just to make sure I go through and kind of loop it and give it one more little cinch to keep that tension in there. And then you're done with that end. And once you're done with that end, snip off your little thread, then you're going to take out the pins all the way around. Okay, so now I have, as you can see, all the pins pulled out from all four sides of the piece, and I have just the one side lace. And before I start lacing this way now, I'm going to flip it over to the front side, and this is the point where you can play with your piece a little bit. If it's a little off, if it needs to go down a little bit or side to side a little bit to even it up, you can do that by sort of pushing with your fingers. You probably should wear rubber gloves so that you're not getting your acids on it, but I haven't done that. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, and that's where, again where I take my ruler. I check my farthest edge, that's about three quarters of an inch. My farthest edge on this side is exactly three quarters of an inch. 
and I'll check that periodically down the line. And then I will also double check my ends from the farthest point to the edge and from the bottom farthest point to the edge. And if all those look good and if there are any little parts that need adjusting to straighten it out, now's the time to do it. Because after this, we're going to do the final lacing and then after that, of course, you can't really move it around anymore. Okay, now that I've flipped it over and I'm ready to do the final back and forth of the lacing on the piece, I just wanted to show you real quick on how to do the edges. Um, I just do a simple fold over. I just make sure it's kind of squared up and I hold the fabric. I kind of keep my finger in place so it stays down there. And then I just fold it over where it's a nice flat edge. And then I use a couple pins to keep it in place. And then I will do the same on the other side. Making sure it's smooth. You can see that bottom piece kind of sticks out. That's okay. And I will also stick couple pins there and then again in the middle here just to keep it in place as you're stitching and you can take them out as you go. Same on the other side. Okay just as a last little note um, when you start that final lacing on the folded over parts on the ends just make sure that when you go underneath you're catching both pieces of fabric. Otherwise your tension is not going to be even, of course. So make sure that I'm underneath both and I just go up through. And then it's just the same process as what you did on the first side. You lace all the way down to the end and tie it off. Okay, so here it is all finished. Kind of tucking my tails in the back there. Voila! All done. And again, before you frame it, just double check it again. That your lines are all straight and it's even. And then frame it. That's it. Hope it was helpful. Thanks.